this is David McKittrick from Blue Marble Geographics. And today we're going to take a look at another interesting workflow in Global Mapper, in this case for deriving vector features from a raster layer. We're essentially going to extract polygons based on the color range that we want to define. And in this case, as you can see on the, on the screen, there's a very clear and distinct body of water right in the middle here. What we want to do, our objective, is to create a vector version of that. We want to outline it. Now, obviously, we could use the digitizer and meticulously trace it, but there's a much easier way of doing this. We're going to match colors. We're going to de define the polygons based on a color match. Now, the way this process works, uh, the way that you initiate it from the layer menu, you can actually right click in the control center as well on that layer and get to the same uh, option. But specifically what we're looking he for here is the ability to create area features, area features or polygons, same same basic term, um, from equal values. Now, Folks will look at this and say, well, why doesn't it just say colors? Why don't you say create polygons or equal or area features from colors? And the reason for that is because this tool can also be applied with terrain data, either for extracting polygons based on an elevation range or extracting polygons based on a slope range. And uh, perhaps in one of our future uh, videos, we'll take a look at the, uh, those workflows as well. But for now, based on colors, we choose this option. And we um, basically specify what color it is that we want to extract. You'll note the default here at the bottom is to extract all colors. Not that useful in most situations to generate polygons representing every color that's visible. I'm going to create a bit of a mess in my map if I tried that. I want to specify a color. So I want to choose the option to select a color, which I can do in a couple of ways. I'm going to drag this off to the side here so I can actually see what I'm looking at behind the scenes. Uh, if I knew what the RGB values were, I can enter those manually, or I can use the color picker, which is what I'm going to do. And I have a little piece of the pond still visible here. I'm just going to simply click somewhere in there, and it will populate these RGB values for me. I click OK. And once again, if I simply ran with this, I, I use these options, I wouldn't get the results I wanted because we have specified an individual color, a specific set of RGB values. In our case, I know there's a little bit of variation in this. Along the edge, for instance, the color changes slightly. Even adjacent poly, uh, pixels that might look the same will likely have a different RGB value. So we're going to uh, apply what we call fuzziness. There's a fuzziness variable, and it's set to 20 here. This is basically a relative scale from 0 to 2. 256. Higher up the scale, you're going to get much uh, wider coverage, in other words, a little more flexibility. Keeping that lower, it will be more specific to the color you're interested in. And people often ask, what, what do you recommend? Well, it's trial and error. Uh, based on your data, based on what it is that you're trying to extract, try a few uh, values in here, see if it works, and, uh, and uh, go with that then based on, based on your trial and error process. So one other thing I want to do before we initiate this, this uh, procedure, go to area bounds. I'm going to limit the extraction just to the area of interest. Obviously, I'm not interested in anything beyond. So I'll just draw a box. And you can define this extent in, in a number of different ways. So we'll click OK on that. Everything else in the other dialog box should be fine. We'll click OK once again. And it will initiate the process of extracting our polygons. Um, if I zoom into the edge of one of the polygons, you'll see the consequence of this action. I'm just going to use my zoom tool. I'm going to drag a little box here. You'll see it is specifically outlined the pixels. And you can even get an idea as to the resolution of the image based on the size of these blocks that are appearing here. There is a very simple solution for that issue. If you want something that's a little more aesthetically pleasing without these jagged lines, you can select the polygon, which I'm just doing with my digitizer right now. Right click, and there's a couple of different ways you can get to this next tool, either through the Move Reshape Features submenu or Vertex Editing. You will find an option to smooth. If I select smooth, noting the line that's still uh, highlighted on my uh, map screen, you'll see it smooths it. Now, maybe that's not enough smoothing. We want a little bit more. This time, if I go to the um, uh, highly uh, Favorites menu, any tool that I use is going to be added here automatically. And you can see my smooth tool that I just activated is here as well. I simply have to click the adjacent button, and it will continue that smoothing process. As you can see, removing some of those irregularities. So that's a very simple tool for extracting vector features from a raster layer.